From the outside, the children normally cut some flowers and arrange them so that to make our classroom beautiful. And then we look at them and I said, most of the time they will say, we've got a puzzle of um, hibiscus. Okay, so I, we tell them exactly what the name of the flowers is because they're learning different names, identifications of, of things. So, and I'll, if not, I'll invite them, would you like to to the flower puzzle and they, normally they will always say yes. I think if they see a beautiful, well-prepared environment, the moment they look at it, they feel the awe and they, you know, they, they get um, inspired. If you see a beautiful thing, well-organized thing, it says to you that it's been well looked after and it's been taken care for and that's what message you convey to the children. And normally, if they see you do handle things beautifully and carefully, and that's, they just copy because that's what you, I mean, teaching or it's like a modeling. Children will copy what we, what we do, not what we say. So if you take reverence and respect to the environment, I think the children will do the same. In my space, it's basically the environment that speaks to the children. My job is to prepare the environment and look after the environment and then show them and invite them. So my job, and let them learn and explore from it. We do a lot of art, um, different things. We do watercolor painting, just as you can see, we've got a um, multi-purpose board there. We're in, um, we use just a poster paint. It's their space. This whole thing is their space. They belong here. I try to um, hear their voices. Their voices, children's voices is very important. So we talk about what are we gonna plant in our vegetable garden? Or what are we gonna plant in this? So they've got input in most of the things that we do. It is really important for the children to use real things because, because that's what we use anyway. And if you're going to spend money on buying things, you might as well buy quality things and real things. Because if you buy lots of plastic, then we want to lessen our impact on the environment. We want to be part of, um, I know, the big, we were big on sustainability. Even in my kitchen, we used actual things. You can ask the children, we want to reuse the things, repurpose. And as, as, as again, uh, if they see things like that, it will give them an idea. Of, yeah, I, we, uh, there are things that we can reuse and repurpose instead of buying things. And it looks good too. <laughs> I really believe that using natural resources are good for the children. Um, it's just avoiding plastic because we don't want, we're part of the Montessori philosophy is looking after our environment. We focus on sus sustainability um, by using the natural resources. The children can feel and learn how to look after the trees, plant some trees. We use some of we some of them were given by grandparents and parents because we, we we ask for help and we tell them if you got some natural resources during your walk please bring them in. I think with this there's no limit of what they can do. While um, with the plastic they're always they were built or they were made for a specific reason. While this one imagination is the potentials and the, it's it's unlimited they could do whatever they want and it's very clever the way they use it as well